Morning, y'all. Go to Lakers. Right, I'm going to talk today something that we talk about a lot in our podcast. If you're not following the podcast I do with Lou Stagner and Scott Fawcett, it's called Hack It Out Golf. It's over here. Uh, maybe give us a uh, subscribe on there and give it a listen. We've been talking about these ideas a lot. Scott and Lou have been talking about it ages, for ages, and they've really educated me in these ideas of angles. Should you chase the best angle, like down the right side of a fairway to get to a green, those kind of ideas? Now what happens if we talk about these ideas, um, you're going to find that you might be able to be a much better golfer than you are just by getting smarter. This whole idea starts with the cone of dispersion, so how you disperse each one of your clubs. Let's show you a test I did way before Christmas on this idea. I'll be really interested in the comments down below. Do you chase angles already? Is it something you do? Do you try and hit it down the right side to get a better angle into a green? Those kind of ideas. Let me know down there. If you're not subscribed to this channel already, maybe hit that subscribe button down there. And uh, give the video a thumbs up if you like this kind of educational video. Kind of dispersion. Show you what I mean. So this is a nine iron, I'm hitting 150 out. I'm gonna hit shots from 150, 200, and then tee shots as well. The reason we're gonna do 200 is we're gonna take this to a simulated course to show you the dangers as well in this idea of trying to seek that angle. And as you can imagine, with a nine iron, I feel like I can take dead aim, and I feel like I can, uh, you know, really attack. So I'm really in a position now where I'm like in a, scoring position, if that makes sense. If I've got myself here, I now feel within reason, subject to what's going on up the green, I'm in a position where if I don't try and get this ball close, the rest of the field will be, and I'll be losing out. We're now 200 yards out, I'm gonna hit my six iron. Some of you might notice this is a different six iron. If you want me to do a video on if I should change, I might be changing my irons. I'm practicing with these. If you want to see a video on why I might do that, let me know in, that, uh, in those comments down below. While you're down there, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Don't be afraid to subscribe as well if you're not subscribed to the channel already. So 200 yards out now, it's going to be at the flag, but situation is going to have to be really red as well. Because obviously from 200 yards, I do feel like I could get very unstuck also. And then a few drivers. Now, obviously, I'm relatively confident with my driver. You know, out of the field of golfers I used to compete with and then the people I would play with now, I would definitely feel that I'm going to be on the more accurate side with this club. All right, let's show you those numbers. So let's just take a look at my 150 here is the blue, 200 is the red, and the yellow is the driver. The noticeable difference to kick us off is this circle, this cone of dispersion. Look how much wider it obviously is with the driver. So the 9 iron tighter, then 200 yards wider, and then the driver even wider still. And again, these are a decent batch of drives. Ball speed averaging 160, 22 spin, carry 283, you know, they're my good numbers. Now if we delve deeper into the 9 iron, look at the carry, standard deviation is 2 yards short and long, and let's round that up to 4 yards left or right of this 3.5 right. So uh, let's say 4 and 4, I'm, at, I'm hitting it 8 yards right or on target, or 4 yards right with an 9 iron. I mean I can attack or aim a bit left, and then I'm literally 4 yards away most. Um, with a standard deviation on carry of 2. So I'm constantly landing it around 150, 152, 148 yards. That's attack zone. If we go to my 200 yard shot, we now see a standard deviation short along with three. It's still pretty good, but that's what you'll find with better players. High handicap as this gets bigger, short and long. But left and right now is nearly seven. So not really far off. It's only a yard further right on average, but the standard deviation now is up to 6.8. It's seven yards right and left. So I am definitely able to attack, but I'm also able to hit it nearly 12 yards right if I'm not careful. And if we move that onto the driver, we see a standard deviation short and long of six. Again, the general rule, the higher handicap as you go, this short and long will really get bigger. 
And then my standard deviation left and right now is 17. And that's about, I mean, that's pretty good. 17 yards left and right standard deviation, if you think about it, is not too bad. I mean, I'm averaging 12 left. So if I just aim down the right with that, and then I'm going to be 17 left or 17 right at the worst. That's semi-rough, kind of light rough kind of zone. So I imagine there's nothing there that you wouldn't expect, you know, as it gets further away, my dispersion increase. I mean, we see that with, with all golfers and think about my 17 yards left and right standard deviation with my driver. I would argue that's pretty good from people I've worked with and seen, even through the tour players, if you hit enough shots. Um, if you don't know your standard deviations with your driver, which probably lots of you don't, you'll know what you carry it because that's what your club fit ins and what have you would tell you because that's what they're selling you on. Um, not knowing your standard deviation left and right is a huge problem. If you think about it, I've got 17 yards left and right to bring that in with skill, club fitting even. Uh, I'm not going to find 17 yards of extra distance from a club fitting. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting metric. I was, what was I, two or six yards short and long, 17 left and right? That's the big whammy there, isn't it? So you can see there that my cone of dispersion obviously increases as the clubs get longer, which everyone's would, it's that's a natural thing that happens. So let's take this idea now to like the 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 beast of all angle holes, the 17th foot St Andrews, where obviously if you can get down the right to get a road hole bunker out of playing up the green, well it does, well you'll see, it's going to be a better angle to get in from, but is it worth chasing that? bearing in mind my standard deviation with my driver and mine's relatively quite tight. Go on, Dennis. Oh, LeBron! So even though this is a blind shot, that doesn't bother me at all if I know my yardage, I've picked my line, I'm able to come down in club. I'm now, because of the angle I'm coming in from here, I don't really need to bring that bunker into play. I can just hit right of it, look, and level with it. And with the way the green slopes and works, I mean, this is just, it, it does feel like a, I mean, it's a brilliant angle to come in from. My natural cone of dispersion, remember, was around four right of zero. So I can just aim straight to slightly up the right and play that number. So there's a push. Hopefully it's small enough club. Is it just gonna hang on? Oh, so that's the first one to miss the green. Right, there's a lot of trouble. You gotta remember this hole's super, super tough, but you can't deny that's a much simpler angle to come in from on the 17th here. So I'm averaging 13 yards away, 40 foot, 31 foot, 15, 16, and 36 foot. Again, so I was a little bit further right, but you see my standard deviation of left and right is similar and my short and long dispersion is similar as well. It's tight enough up that right to have some level of consistency. So we're now on the bad angle. If I come out this way, you can see I'm gonna be running over the back rather than before I was over here coming up the length of the green. We're still 200 yards out. So I'm gonna hit the seven iron. I'm just gonna pump it up the right, basically. So I'm now, I'm not gonna look at the flag because I just think it'll be too risky. I'm just gonna try and pump this up the right and just try and find that fat portion of the green. So I'm landing it in the same part almost as sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, as I was landing it from the other angle. But rather than running to the pin, it's running kind of parallel to the pin, so it's not really getting much closer. Like, that's 61 foot and was a pretty good effort. Ah, didn't get the dispersion. Might get lucky, bounce! Oh yeah, all oh, members bounce. And there's again, pretty skanky up the right shot, but fine. Like I don't feel like I have to really, I'm just trying to hit it into that area. I'm now just trying to get to the 18th basically. And I'm gonna do one now where I do try and land the pin. Really gonna go for it, I'm being pushed. I've hit the wrong angle, but I wanna make a birdie. I'm pushing for, you know, scoring in the open. That's a pretty good effort. Is it going to make it? I've hit the seven for the, yep, yeah, that should be perfect. Look at that. Oh, sit, 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 sit. So there's options from there, but it's definitely harder, 
Like that's a high risk shot. The, uh, from the right hand side, it feels like quite a simple, get it to around 30-ish foot, 40 foot kind of part. So if we're 13 yards to 23 yards or 10 yards average further away, it's noticeably easier up the right. So how important is it that I chase that angle off the tee? So I'm going to hit a few now where I just aim down the middle. I remember my cone of dispersion was down the left of my driver, but um, <laughs> I'm going to miss. I think I want to miss left. Oh, and I've pushed it. Fly, 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 fly. Hey, the perfect angle. Look at that. Lovely. Just fly then. Just fly. Lovely. Oh, path ball as well. That couldn't be better. That's a pretty good hit. It's again slightly up the right, so I'm favouring a better angle. It's very interesting. That's me trying to hit the middle and playing more my left miss, which on those actually missed a bit, a little bit to the right. So if you look at my dispersion, 18 yards standard deviation, 10 yards right, averaging on that batch. So I'm actually by luck finding the right hand side. And then if I miss left, Yes, I'm hacking out a little bit of the rough, but I feel like I could move it into a position where a five is in play with a chance of a four. I haven't seen the data of any of the last tournaments from this or the tournament data from this hole, but if I was playing in a tournament here, I would be guessing this hole would be averaging about 4.5 to 4.75. So having putts for five stroke four on this hole puts me in the pack, it, it, it's, it's fine. The other holes where there's less trouble, I might be in a position to attack a little bit more. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna try and remember my standard deviation, even though it was right on that last batch, I kept hitting it would definitely go back a little bit more to the left. Uh, my average miss, my mean if you like. I'm now gonna try and get this ball up the right. So what I'm gonna do is first off, I'm gonna aim right and play my natural shot. Uh huh. So by aiming right, you could, I'm on top of the Odell. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try that again. Just gonna play my standard shot. I'm gonna aim right, but hopefully get my little turn to the left back in. Pretty straight. Oh, go, 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 go. So already that's two where I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm reloading. Now I'm going to aim straight and I'm going to try and move it into the right side. So similar to what you're seeing there on those shots. So I'm going to aim straight, but I'm not going to hit my normal shot pattern. I am going to try and let it just drift to the right. Like that. There we go. That's perfect. And finding the right portion. Like it's doable. And one more aiming straight. And I'm going to try and get that little fall to the right, get it up the right side. Oh, I've, yeah, I have, I've towed it, but it faded. Oh, are you over? Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up! Go! Hmm. Trying to get it up the right side on a hole that has such death, but at the same time rewards. They're just not worth chasing, are they? So I think we can all agree trying to, well, having a better angle into a green definitely can help. There are situations where it will absolutely help. The problem you've got is trying to actively seek that angle off the tee. Well, unless your standard deviation with your driver is superhuman, all there just is a lot of room what you're gonna find is it gets you in more trouble than it helps for the amount it helps with the second shot. Also, what you will find is that if you start asking amateur golfers to hit closer to trouble, bearing in mind it's bogeys and generally double bogeys that ruin their score, they shouldn't really be chasing birdies. They should be trying to keep the ball in play. Trying to get a handicapped golfer to hit closer to the rough, it's going to get them in a lot, a lot of trouble. One of the biggest things here as well, I think, which is interesting is that amateurs, or some amateurs, certainly nowadays, will have a 
good idea of how far they hit their driver, say. So if I ask or do a Twitter by how far do you hit the driver, they'll know an answer. What's your standard deviation with your driver is a question that people don't even know, wouldn't have a clue how to answer. If you don't understand what your standard deviation is with that club, trying to chase angles could be getting you in a lot of trouble. Trying to keep the ball in play is what we're finding with our My Golf Gain students is the key to lowering scores, getting those double bogeys off the cards and trying to keep the ball in play stroke somewhere near the fairway shows huge advantages over them trying to hit a certain side of the fairway. Maybe hit the certain side of your fairway like I did in the test, just by your natural cone of dispersion. Some are gonna get there. Let that play out. Trying to keep your ball in play, hitting away from the trouble areas is gonna be a much better strategy for you lowering your scores. Let me know if this helps in the comments down below. Let me know if it's something you thought about or not. Is it something that you do? Are you chasing that angle and you're now just gonna try and hit it down the middle and keep that ball in play or down the left side because the trouble's all on the right, those kind of ideas. Let me know down there, as always. Thanks for watching.